I miss Pickle. <laughs> yeah, I guess I miss him, but you know, it's like, do you miss a toothache? You know? <laughs> I mean, uh, Pickle you know, was interesting. He was interesting, but after a while, I mean, how how interesting can a fish be that lives standing up in a sponge because he can't swim? <laughs> animal that Debbie brought home was a Purdue chicken that had fallen off a truck and she stopped and picked it up. It ate everything in sight. It grew bigger and bigger and bigger until that chicken was the size of a large turkey. And I tried to put her on a diet and she she would just eat anything. It ate plastic, it ate corn, it ate one time a rat got in the pen that killed the rat because it didn't was afraid it was going to eat its food. She laid one egg and then she died of a heart attack because she was so obese. And then I got another rescue chicken, but the same thing. He just got so fat and he had a heart attack and died. So then I decided that I was going to raise chickens. Debbie and I got married in 1991. And at the time, only pet I had was a Newfoundland dog, Reggie. He weighed 170 pounds. And he had that dog for 16 years, and the dog would have lived longer, but a pack of wild dogs came on the farm, and he had a heart attack and died. Debbie had two Siamese cats, Tiny and Sam for Samantha. Sam was never a real healthy cat. It had the meanest, nastiest disposition, and it couldn't retract its claws. It was emaciated. It kept throwing up its food, cross-eyed, fangs that stuck out, and it whined all the time. Meow. <laughs> which really made it a fun cat to be around. There was one point where Sam was really, really sick, and I thought that that was the end. And I called the vet up, and I was crying, and I said, Sam needs to be put down. And sure enough, she recovered. So she lived another five years. <laughs> wow. We've had a number of, of different fowl. In addition to the mockingbird, we've had three starlings, numerous chickens. I don't know how many chickens. Well, we had ducks at one time, too. We had about a dozen ducks, and then it got to be less and less and less. One at a time, the fox would get the ducks. Until we ended up with one duck. We had the duck in with the chickens. Well, the duck thought that those chicken eggs were hers, and she sat on them and hatched them out, and she thought that they were her babies. She loved those little chickens. But then the black snakes came and ate the little chickens. Yeah, it was sad. Oh, I forgot about the geese. I always wanted a pair of geese that looked like the goose in the mother goose nursery rhymes, this big plump goose. We searched for months till we finally found a pair that was for sale 
And we bought them. And then these other two geese showed up. So we had four geese at one time. And unfortunately, an otter got that first pair. So we ended up with a pair of geese. And just recently, the boy goose lost the ability to make the oil that gives them the water repellent. He went down into the pond and he went swimming, but then he couldn't get out and he ended up drowning. So now we're down to one goose. We got Squeaky and Peanut, Peanut and another cat, Butterscotch. Butterscotch, yeah, all at once. Butterscotch died and Squeaky had something wrong with it. She had a kink in her neck. Oh, her that's right. Her head was tilted. That's right. Squeaky got carried off by the owl. Right. In the middle of the night. Yeah. We found her the next day in the neighbor's yard about a mile away. Sometimes there's a tragic death. We never talked about the quails. We had one quail in particular, his name was Mr. Bean. And this little quail, just a little ball of fur, kept jumping all around like a jumping bean. I, I loved Mr. Bean. Well, one day, a red-tailed hawk swooped down and took Mr. Bean. So that was the end of Mr. Bean. Pavarotti, the little rooster. When the hawk took him, that was hard to take. The animal I miss the most is, it's a toss up between Pogo and Peanut. Peanut had a lot of the characteristics that Tom has. When you give him a treat, he didn't eat all of the treat. And Tom is like that. He always leaves a little something on his plate. Every so often he would bring me a mouse without its head. The first time I took him to the vet, the vet said, you better listen to this cat's heart. And the cat sounded like And the vet told us that he wasn't gonna live any more than six months. We wanted to make sure Peanut was comfortable. So I built a condominium for Peanut so that he could scratch and he could climb and, and put it all in the shed. I had an old wood stove and I put that in there so Peanut wouldn't get too cold. He had a bed with a down comforter in it Peanut finally died 13 years later. We found him one morning in the driveway. He had been hunting all night and, well, not all night, because sometime during the night he expired. This is Ginger, and I've had Ginger in the hospital now probably for about a year. 
which is a pen in the house, of course. Ginger developed bumblefoot. It's a very serious staph infection. And I hate to think about it, but I think maybe either Ginger or Barney might be the next to go. Barney's not in the best health. In fact, Barney's gotten so that he can't see 20 feet. And Ginger never completely recovered from that foot problem. Um, it, it's weakened her. There's a joke that possums are born dead on the side of the road because that's the only place you ever see them. We rescued a possum, and that was Pogo. The possum had all kinds of bugs on him, and he was tore all up, and he was, oh, he was a mess. And we fell in love with him. His two back legs had both pulled out of the sockets, so he was never, ever going to walk again. Pogo was a paraplegic possum. <laughs> I made him a little skateboard that he laid on, and it held him up about as high as a possum is off the ground in the wild. And he used to wheel all over because we have hardwood floors. The only problem was I found when he got to the edge of a carpet, the wheels would kind of bump, and he'd slide off the front of it. So I made a little seat belt to hold him on there. Every night he got watermelon. He wanted berry blast for yogurt. Royer cheese. Scrambled eggs and butter. But he wasn't supposed to have scrambled eggs and butter. You're not supposed to feed that to possums. Some nights I'd give him a full shampoo and you know, dry him and blow dry him, but not every night. I'm not sure I would have attempted to save Pogo, but once he was saved, he certainly did enjoy life. Debbie found this deformed fish. We were raising fish, and if it would have been me, I'd have thrown it in the trash. He was a friendly fish. At any rate, we kept this fish, called him Pickle, because he, had, he was in a real pickle. The fish had a condition called stump body. It's where the head forms normally and the tail forms normally, but the body doesn't form at all. So he couldn't stay upright. He kept falling over and sinking to the bottom and laying there. Well, we couldn't have that. So. Tom made a little foam enclosure for him, and we used to slide him in there, and he would stay there all day long. And we would drop food down right in front of him so he could get it, and that's how Pickle spent his whole existence. And we had him for six years, but the aquarium heater malfunctioned. And it burned him up. <laughs> Poor old Pickle died of electrocution, I'm afraid. We didn't bury him. We took him down to the riverside and threw him in, and I guess the crabs ate him. People think about animals as living forever, but most animals don't live very long. But I think that anything, when it dies, just dies, and that's it, you know. I don't. I believe it's one huge ball of energy. And I think that all living things go back there. <laughs>